Since resigning as governor, Sarah Palin has pioneered a new style of politics. Through Facebook and Twitter, she goes straight for the Palin faithful. It's been hugely effective at getting her message out unchallenged. But if she runs for president, she knows that's got to change. In terms of making the decision, presumably the pressure on you and your family is a big part of that decision making because you've been through a lot, you take a lot of flag. Our family is pretty thick skinned though. We, we have taken the, you know, the pressure and um, pressure I think uh, builds character and allows someone to handle it. what else is coming. For the last 20 years being in political office. Um, our family has had unconventional one. schedules, we put up with a lot of flack, and we're still standing and we're doing well, so we're not worried too much about uh, that pressure put on the family because we've um, we've been tried by fire. What about, I mean, it, what are the, the, the criticisms that have hurt you the most? I mean, clearly, one of the big ones that's thrown at you is that you're not intellectually capable. I mean, does that sting? Who said that? Well, we kind of fell into Lots of criticism about, but, uh, you know, the interviews that you've given, the ability well, to get your head around foreign policy. How about the idea of um, really perhaps what some of the media you know, has chosen to portray? Let's take a couple of examples. And I really don't want to have to talk politics in one of the best days of our life here in Alaska, but I'll give you one more answer. Things like um, that are misconstrued regarding uh, rumors out there that are still in the media because reporters don't do their homework and they don't too often and they don't set the record straight, though I think it's their job to set the record straight. Rumors like, I didn't know that Africa was a continent. That's still out there. That's a lie. Things like, I censored books when I was the mayor up here in Alaska. That's a lie. She says she's thick-skinned, but wounds from the campaign more than two years ago still seem raw. So is she driven by a desire to prove people, especially the media, wrong? If I decide to run, we know that we have to put up with a lot of the, the BS that comes from the media. You're saying your favorite from the media? Which one is that? Is that Trig is not my child, which is still out there in the media? I mean, how offensive is that? I mean, how can we do that? Would you be offended if somebody said that your child isn't really your child? It's offensive. Sarah Palin is in India. Do you think she thinks there are swing states? <laughs> Liberal commentator Shannon Moore has locked horns with her for years. She says Palin loves to play the victim, but she has little sympathy for her. People say some pretty personal things about her, that she's a moron, that she's a fool, that Trigg wasn't hers. Is that fair game? I think for Sarah, she has used her kids as props, as examples of her being pro-life with a pregnant daughter, of her being, you know, uh, her 9-11 patriotism by having her son go into the military, her pro-life about having a Down syndrome child and holding him up like he's the Lion King baby. I mean, she put those kids in, in harm's way, I think, when it comes to the press. I'm kind of a junk collector. <laughs> Such visceral criticism is perplexing territory for Sarah's parents. Chuck Heath is a tough man. Now into his 70s, he's still working as an animal trapper. But it's clear his daughter's political life has affected them all. He agreed to a rare interview and began by showing us around the extraordinary family home. Sarah's a good hunter too. Sarah's a good shot. Everything she does, she's competitive. And uh, she was competitive in, in her hunting and fishing. She definitely wants what's best for the country. Uh, she's never been one to seek the glory for herself. But while Sally admires her daughter's political motives, she worries hugely about the possible dangers of her running for president. As a mother, I have concerns. Uh, her safety and that of the kids. I do have a concern there if she were to do that, but... Would you ever allow that concern to to make you suggest to her don't do it we never talk politics with Sarah when we're with her we talk about family we talk about sports we talk about hunting fishing I don't think we ever talk about politics. she says in her book though that she runs things past the family mm -hmm. yeah runs things past us very quickly. Ah, uh, yes, I have, I have voiced my concern. Not There's me. No, no I don't know. Well listen to me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she knows how I feel, but 
it, it's risky. And people have threatened her life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and her kids, too. So. In what way? What are they saying? I mean... Oh, a good example is uh, one guy from Pennsylvania. Um, he sent us and other people copies of a gun he bought, copies of a, uh, a receipt from a gun he bought, copies of a one-way ticket to Anchorage, and we kind of laughed it off. We got a restraining order on him. Here in Wasilla, she doesn't have that good of security, other than family, friends, and things like that. And um, not only Sarah's been uh, threatened, but our whole family's been threatened, so we, we sleep with the guns. While Palin and her family weigh up the personal issues, the key political calculation must be, can she win? At the North Pole Shooting Club, there appear to be few club rules. An eclectic membership is drawn together by a love of the Constitution and a belief that freedom comes in the shape of a gun. There's real anger that their very way of life is under assault. Sarah Palin, with her love of rifles and religion, speaks to that anger. But will that translate into votes? The exact opposite of what's going on in Washington is, is, is what we need, but I think we have to be careful not just grabbing in the dark for anything. I think that she's probably the, the one with the best chance of winning that might actually be able to slow some of it. I loved what she did to our, with our state when she was our governor. I wish she hadn't left as our governor. Um, I don't know if she has what it takes to be the president of the United States of America. It's heading for minus 20 Celsius at the end of the Iron Dog race in Fairbanks, North Alaska. Sarah Palin rushes to the finishing line, but today she doesn't want to talk. Hi, Sarah. How are you? No Sarah's husband, Todd, had been winning all of the last leg, but in the end came in second overtaken when his machine hit an obstacle and was damaged. They say you need to be tough, skilled and lucky to win the Iron Dog. Not a world away from politics then. Sarah Palin's career has been built on a potent mix of luck, opportunism and shrewd political timing. She's the outsider who wants the biggest prize in politics. And everyone I spoke to, friend or foe, said she should never be underestimated. She's now just got to decide if she's ready to run the race.